Okay, so we're with Annie Petsank again of the Environmental Defense Fund. Um, we're talking Canada. Uh, Canada had an interesting statement a few minutes ago. Uh, tell us about that. To the surprise of many people here, the Canadian minister said uh, that Canada supports starting negotiations now on a new legal agreement, a binding right. agreement, to uh, replace the Kyoto Protocol, an agreement that would uh, enter into force or take effect in 2015. So uh, a number of the major ingredients that countries were looking for, binding agreement, deadline, uh, coverage in terms of scope, uh, uh, he roughly outlined the contours that was a major development here and has the potential to help unlock uh, some of the blockage that we've seen so far. What were those key blockages? Uh, the Africa Group and a number of other developing countries have said they want the Kyoto Protocol to continue. The EU has said, well, we are willing to consider a second commitment period under the Kyoto Protocol if certain conditions are met. That is, the commencement of negotiations on a new legal instrument with uh, a binding, at least to binding commitments. The United States had taken a different tack and said, we need to see symmetrical legal obligations, whatever they are. And since uh, uh, China was not, and other major industrialized countries, major developing countries, the basic group, Brazil, South Africa, China, and India, had not been willing to agree to uh, bind themselves to legally binding targets. The United States has said, okay, well then we're not willing to bind ourselves to a legally binding target. What we do and what they do has to be symmetrical. The important development uh, underscored by the, the Canadian uh, minister's announcement is that countries are, are starting to think in terms of, right here in Durban, launching a negotiation that would create a new home for key pieces of the Kyoto Protocol to go forward. The Kyoto Protocol doesn't disappear at the end of 2012 key elements of it can be taken forward and brought into a new home in a new agreement that countries would launch negotiations on right here at Durban. Do you expect that, um, that this development with Canada will, uh, will push other countries to, to jump in the mix now in the next couple hours? I'm very hopeful about that. I wouldn't say the next couple of hours, but I would say more likely over the next 24 hours. Uh, the ministers have begun to arrive, and certainly this is a, a topic that the ministers really need to take on. But with the Canadian minister being so forthright about it, uh, that certainly has, has raised the bar for other ministers who might have been more reluctant. And considering where we were just only a few days ago, there was discussion about Canada withdrawing from the Kyoto Protocol. They may still do that, but they've clearly signaled that they are willing to start negotiations on a new legal instrument to take Kyoto's place. And that has the potential to take this process considerably forward. Have we seen any other important developments in the past couple hours? Uh, a lot of those are, seem to be occurring behind closed doors. I wouldn't yet call them developments, but we ha certainly have seen intensive huddling uh, between and among, for example, the United States and, and a number of developing countries, between and among the EU, the European Union, Union and the small island states uh, and uh, various uh, uh, huddles involving the large uh, countries in the, in the so-called basic group. That's the kind of huddling you need to have going on with a bit of shuttle diplomacy between and among these groups in order to obtain the political agreement on how to go forward here. We've heard Pablo Salone and a few other people talk about the importance of transparency in these negotiations. Are, is this huddling uh, sort of the opposite of transparency? Well, you know, uh, it's very important that the negotiations have a strong degree of transparency with observers like myself being able to observe in negotiating rooms about different texts. We also understand that it's important for the, I understand, so I used to be a government negotiator. It's also important for the governments to have a chance to sit down and talk directly with each other uh, in, a, in a very candid way. And one of the things that we're hearing praise for, which is really great, uh, is a process called the Indaba that the South African hosts have put together uh, in, in South Africa leading that process as a kind of Council of Elders, I believe, is the translation of Indaba, and uh, the Indaba having begun to meet, and that's where we hope the political agreement around this will be hammered out. You seem optimistic. The, in these talks, at least as long as I've been going to them, uh, it's a roller coaster. 
a few hours you're feeling like this whole thing's going to crash and fall apart. A few hours later you see a possibility as some islands of consensus start to emerge. Then something else happens and those islands of consensus start to break up and it looks like it's going to crash again. So it's too soon to tell overall whether we'll get an outcome. But the Canadian ministerial statement I think is an important signal. I don't want to build it up too much, but there certainly has been a ferment of activity uh, around and following it that gives me reason to be hopeful. Great. Thank you, Annie. Thanks.